Have you ever found yourself questioning your own reality in a conversation, feeling confused and doubting your own memories or beliefs? I can guarantee you're not alone. And it's not just you being overly sensitive. It's called gaslighting. And it's happening right now, more than ever. Welcome to the Mindful Communication Revolution. I'm Stephen Walters, here to help you build stronger personal and professional relationships through effective communication strategies, especially when it comes to tackling the insidious tactics of gaslighting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to handle gaslighting in the moment as it's happening, not what to do later after the dust settles. It's about responding effectively during those tense, confusing situations when someone is actively trying to manipulate your reality. If you've watched my previous videos, you already know how to spot the signs, those subtle and not so subtle red flags. But today, we're going to go a step further. What can you do right now to protect yourself when gaslighting is happening to you? By the end of this video, you'll have six powerful real-time techniques to reclaim your reality and turn the tables on gaslighters, whether it's a friend, a family member, a coworker, and especially from the media. So stick around because these strategies can empower you to take back control of any conversation and feel stronger in the face of manipulation. But here's the thing, recognizing gaslighting is just the first step. What really matters is how you respond when it's happening right in front of you, sometimes up close and in your face. So let's get specific about how you can handle it. Imagine you're at a social gathering and suddenly a friend says, if you weren't so sensitive, I wouldn't have to talk to you like this. Hmm. Sound familiar? What's happening here is a classic case of someone trying to deflect blame. They're making it seem like their behavior is okay because they're pinning the problem on you, saying it's all about your sensitivity. Here's what you can do. Try responding calmly with something like this. I understand that's how you see it, but my feelings are valid and I'd appreciate it if you'd respect them. Simple, right? And here's a little trick. Use I statements to keep things focused on how you feel rather than getting defensive. You might say, I feel dismissed when my feelings are labeled as sensitive. I'd appreciate a more respectful discussion. It's a great way to make sure your voice is heard without escalating the situation. But let's dig a little deeper because you know, it really helps to practice these kinds of statements ahead of time. Try it with a friend or even in front of a mirror by yourself. The more you rehearse, the more confident you'll feel when it actually happens. So why does this matter so much? Because setting a boundary like this shows you're not going to accept the blame shifting. It's all about standing up for your right to feel what you feel. And when you've practiced your responses, you're going to handle the moment a lot calmer with a higher level of confidence. Now that you've got your boundary set, what do you do when someone tries to twist your memory and make you question your own reality? Let's ground ourselves with a reality check. Imagine you're in a meeting at work and a coworker suddenly says, I don't remember agreeing to this plan. Didn't we decide to do something else? Does that ring a bell? This is a classic move by the gaslighter. They're trying to make you doubt yourself by pretending they don't remember something that you know for sure happened. Here's your move. Stay calm and say something like this. Actually, I remember discussing this last Tuesday and deciding on this plan. Let me check my notes to confirm. You're staying grounded in what you know to be true and you have the evidence. Another smart tip is to pay attention to patterns. If you notice this kind of behavior happening often, like them constantly forgetting or twisting things, it's a sign of manipulation. And here's something extra you can do. Try a quick physical grounding exercise. It could be as simple as touching an object or feeling your feet on the floor. This helps you stay present and focused, even when someone's trying to throw you off. This is effective because when you stay grounded in reality and recognize these patterns, you break the cycle of confusion and keep your confidence intact. All right, so you're grounded and clear headed, but what if they try to use big words or fancy jargon to make you feel small or confused? Let's get into that next. Picture this, you're in a debate or a heated discussion and the other person throws out a bunch of big fancy words, making you feel like you're not smart enough to understand or Maybe a news presenter is using complex jargon to spin a story. Here's what's really going on. They're using complex language to create a power imbalance, making you feel inferior or less knowledgeable. Basically, they're trying to talk over your head. So what do you do? Ask for clarification. Try asking this. Could you explain what you mean by that? Or I'm not familiar with that term. Can you break it down for me? This shows that you're not afraid to question them. 
And if they actually don't know what the word means, you'll know it right away. And here's a bonus tip. Make it a habit to learn new words and phrases, especially ones related to your interests or field. The more you know, the less those obfuscating, intimidating words might be. I want you to dig a little deeper with this. I want you to build a strong vocabulary. It'll empower you to understand and challenge manipulative language. It's also a way to make sure no one can use fancy words to confuse or intimidate you. This is most important because knowing what words mean and feeling confident enough to ask questions levels the playing field and it reduces the gaslighter's perceived authority. You might also want to check out the playlist I've linked in the description. It covers some of the most commonly used advanced vocabulary words, but do that after watching these last three scenarios, because who knows, you might have to deal with somebody who's gaslighting you really soon. So you're standing your ground with your words, but what happens when the gaslighter uses kindness or concern as a way to undermine you by using compassionate language as a weapon? Maybe during a discussion, someone says, I'm just trying to help you, but you're clearly too emotional to see reason. So what's actually wrong with that? It sounds kind of okay. However, they're using seemingly kind or compassionate language to make you doubt yourself. It's a sneaky way of gaslighting. How do you respond to that? You reflect back on what they're saying, but stay firm. I hear that you're concerned, but it feels like my emotions are being dismissed. Can we discuss this respectfully? This keeps the focus on mutual respect. Here's a little strategy. Keep the conversation centered on facts, not emotions. Don't let them redirect the discussion on how you're feeling. Keep it on track. And here's why this works. When you recognize emotional manipulation and call it out, you keep control of the conversation and prevent your emotions from being used against you. But what if you're just not sure if what you're hearing is true? Let's find out how to check the facts without getting caught in their game. You do this by seeking external validation in real-time contexts. So you're scrolling through social media and a post from a media outlet catches your eye. Something feels off and you start questioning if what you're reading is even true. Here's what's happening. Media gaslighting uses selective information to manipulate how you see things. If you're feeling confused or emotionally reactive, that's a big clue. Here's your best move. Pause. Don't react right away. Look up the information on a reliable fact-checking site. Then you can say or think, I've just checked this with a few other trusted sources and it seems there's more to the story than what's being presented here. Here's a pro tip. In a group setting, ask questions like this. Can you clarify what you mean by that? It forces people to explain themselves more clearly and will reveal more information to you if what they're saying is gaslighting, lies, or bull, you know what. Think about developing a list of reliable sources you trust. Knowing where to find accurate information gives you the power to challenge misinformation confidentially. This will help you because when you validate the facts, you protect yourself from manipulation and help others hopefully see the real story. So now you've got your facts and confidence back, but what happens when the gaslighter tries to isolate you, making you feel like you're the only one who thinks differently? Here's how you can stay strong. Limit or remove toxic influences. These are immediate actions. Imagine someone who keeps saying, everyone else thinks you're overreacting. I'm the only one who cares enough to tell you the truth. What's happening here is that this kind of talk is an isolation tactic designed to make you feel alone and dependent on them for understanding. To get through this gaslighting tactic, politely disengage. You could say this, I appreciate your concern, but I need to take some time to reflect on this by myself. And then step away from the situation. Here's a quick tip for you when you feel uncomfortable around people like this. Always have an exit strategy in mind. It might be as simple as saying, I need to step away for a moment. Also consider setting digital boundaries too. Mute, block, or unfollow accounts that you know are the main sources of gaslighting tactics. Don't purposefully expose yourself to gaslighting when you have the choice to avoid it. So now you know how to stand up for yourself, even when someone tries to isolate you and make you feel alone. You've got the tools to handle gaslighting from any direction, and you're ready to protect your peace of mind. Let's quickly recap what we covered on how to handle gaslighting in the moment. Before I tell you about one more final tip, start by setting clear boundaries. Ground yourself in reality. Use your words to level the playing field and watch out for manipulative compassion. And when in doubt, seek external validation and don't hesitate to remove toxic influences from your life. Remember, you have the power to protect your reality and your peace of mind, but it has to be one step at a time. And now that you know how to handle gaslighting in the moment, here's that final tip. 
Watch this video next because it's packed with tips and strategies on how you can master your effective communication skills even further. Thanks for watching and hearing the truth. Stay strong and shut down gaslighting on the spot as it happens. I'll see you online soon.